was invincible. What was it like for you when you lost to Roberto Duran? Do you have to have a whole different mindset, get your head re-geared completely, start to think of yourself as a winner again? Yes, well, I tell you, very few fighters will admit it. Um, there is that fear, and there you thought, they say, well, what happens if I lose again? That thought has across everyone's mind. And there is... One of the things about that is it, it becomes a little easier for many fighters after losing their first fight to accept defeat. What made them appear so invincible and so tough while they're undefeated is refusing to accept the possibility of defeat. But once you've been there, and maybe you find out, well, it isn't that all that terrible. <laughs> what is it like coming up in weight, as Pintor is doing in this division now? Is it easier to do at the, at the lower divisions like this rather than to do it through the welterweight and middleweight divisions? Well, there's only a four pound difference in weight, and I can't imagine that that means all of that that much, but that remains to be seen. In general, I think it's true that a, a puncher doesn't take his punch with him as he moves up in weight. That is to say, his punch is strongest in his natural division, in his natural division, and as he goes up in weight, the punch doesn't carry as much power. You look at Arthur McCanty, the referee. Is this a case, Ray, do you feel of both fighters are pretty much brawlers. They're going to get in there and try to slug it out. Does anybody, were you in the position of, say, Lupe Pinto or, or Wilfredo Gomez, either one, do you change your style to the other man or do you just dance with Rud Brungia, so to speak? Well, you can't really set a plan. You become strategic within the ring itself. And uh, like Pinto and Gomez, quite natural. They're both guys are bangers. Pinto goes, comes straight at you. Gomez, I think Gomez is a better technician in the ring than Pintor, although they still like to get in there and bang with each, each other. Pintor is a guy, of course, who was, actually his last outing, he was not too impressive as he beat Jorge Lujan. He won it in 10 rounds. It was not a title fight, and he really was not too impressive. But the fight before that, against Shung Hoon Lee in Los Angeles, he retained his WBC Bantamweight title by knocking him out in the fifth round. Going back to that, you had to go all the way back to February 22nd of 1981 when he beat Jose Uziga in the fight you saw just a couple of moments ago, or at least parts of it. But he had to go 15 rounds. It was not very impressive there. So for Pintor, he has been somewhat on again, off again. I look at Pinter as the kind of fighter who is a truth machine. He brings out the truth in his opponent. And he's going to be there, and if the opponent is really in top shape, really primed mentally and emotionally for the fight, then, then he can be beaten. But if he's not, if, he's, if, if the weight situation has been too much for him or anything else, then Pinter, the truth comes out. Pintor comes into the ring looking all business right now. When we saw Wilfredo Gomez, to be very honest with you, in Las Vegas on the Cooney Holmes undercard, I was underwhelmed by him. I really did not think he fought a very good fight then. Uh, as I say, he, he's a sort of fighter who comes down to his opponent or up to his opponent, so to speak. He doesn't create... His greatness is in, in coming to the, to the opponent that you think is better than him, and suddenly you see that this guy is going to be right there. That's what happened when he fought Zerati and surprised everyone. You saw the record, 49-5-1. and one. Is it easier, Larry Holmes, easy to fight a brawler when you are a brawler yourself? Uh, I don't think so, Barry. I think uh, Gomez can do both. He can be a brawler, he can be a boxer. I've seen him try to box uh, uh, Sanchez, but it didn't really work well. Sanchez had too much on the ball for him, but uh, Gomez is a good fighter, and he's going to come out and fight. I'm looking for Gomez to start off right from the bell. Well, again, he's a man with something to prove now, and as Larry Merchant mentioned, he comes up or down on the level of his opponent. He is going to have to be up to handle the likes of Lupe Pintor. Bit of a waiting game going on here as Pintor, the first into the ring, being the challenger. We await the arrival of Wilfredo Gomez into the ring. Kind of a time span here. We've talked about this on numerous occasions, Ray, but it's difficult just to stand around and wait. Well, for a new guy, a guy that gets into the ring is green, inexperienced guy, it's a fact of waiting. Uh, it has a tendency to make your nerves even greater. But these guys here, professionals, they've been, they've been through the mill, so they know what it's all about. Crowd reacting now to the arrival, as you see, of Wilfredo Gomez coming in. Somewhere inside of that entourage, you will see Wilfredo Gomez. That's the problem with these little guys. You can't see them through the entourage. <laughs> That's right. Entourage outweighing them by about 200 pounds here. As you see, this is his 17th title defense, so he has been around the track more times than once. We've talked about his loss to Salvador Sanchez. That really the only black mark on an otherwise very impressive record. 34-1 and one with 32 knockouts, and you don't hardly get any better than that. <laughs> That's a very impressive record. 
and, and every one of all of those title defenses, and that's a lot of title defenses, have been won by knockouts. Shaking hands with Don King, the promoter of this fight. He's looking very loose. Lupe Pinto on the other side of the ring, looking all business. And Gomez actually seeming to enjoy himself here. Now he starts to get his game face on. Arthur McCanty, the referee, talking to Wilfredo Gomez. And there is the record of Wilfredo Gomez. A little bit contradictory to what we just told you, but one report that we have says 34 and 1. This one says 37, 1 and 1, with 37 knockouts. I am not sure that that is right, but we'll go with that anyway. Tale of the tape between these two fighters, not a lot to choose. Age comparable, the height is comparable, the weight is right exactly the same, and Pinto, remember, had to come up to reach a couple of inches for Gomez, although really I don't think that reach is that much of a factor amongst the little men. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, and the introductions of the fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go, and one of the big feature bouts this evening, 15 rounds of boxing for the World Boxing Council Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. The WBC supervisor in charge at ringside, Brad Pye of Los Angeles, California. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you on my right, wearing white trunks with a blue-yellow trim, the challenger this evening from Guajimalpa and Mexico. Weighing in at 121 and a half for the fine record of 38 knockouts and his 49 great wins. Presently, the World Boxing Council Bantamweight Champion of the World, El Campeón del Mundo Peso Gallo, Guadalupe Pintor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you on my left, the challengers. Great opponent, really needing no introduction. He is the defending champion. Red trunks in a white band out of San Dulce, Puerto Rico. Same weight, 121 and a half pounds. 37 knockouts and his 37 great wins. The present World Boxing Council Super bantamweight champion known as Wilfredo Bazooka Gomez. <laughs> Referee Arthur Mercanti now to give instructions. And ladies and gentlemen, judging at the inside, the three men that judged about their ballots count, the referee will only supervise. We have Dickie Cole of Texas, Harold Laterman of New York, Arthur Idala of New York, referee now, Arthur Mercante, New York. Good evening, uh, Lupe and Wilfredo. This contest for the Super Bantamweight Championship of the World is conducted with the rules of the World Boxing Council in conjunction with the Louisiana State Athletic Commission. You both know the rules, you've been, inst you've been instructed. I will enforce the rules. You must obey them. Shake hands now. Return to your corners to await the starting bell. Good luck. So everything is done except for the opening bell, and we will get to that in just a matter of seconds here. Lupe Pintor, the challenger. Wilfredo Gomez is the champion. This is his 18th title defense. It'll be interesting to see if Gomez does go after Pintor early on. That has been his history. delay here while Jimmy Lennon gets out of the ring and here we go round one Gomez on the left of your screen Pinto on the right Gomez the red trunks the white stripe Pinto in the white trunks boxing match early on here now, though, it's just a thin out process. Both fighters trying to see what the other has. So you might not see any action until one is able to land a big punch, and then either fighter will go to work. Gomez, the last time he saw him, actually bided his time for quite a while. Oh, 
what you see from Gomez is the fact he'll use that left hand very, very well and set his man up for an overhand right. He measures his opponent, and you'll see that left hand working to the body constantly. You saw that take effect just a moment ago with the jab leading to the overhead right. You've talked about that, Ray, what an effective punch that overhead is. It is, especially if you aim like there, he just the right hand. He sets his opponent up, he measures his opponent. Well, early on, Gomez looking very sharp. Pinto right now playing a waiting game. Well, Pinto comes straight in, and uh, he, he waits and he buys his time. Yet he's, he's aggressive, but yet not aggressive because he's not throwing out many punches yet. But once he gets inside, he's very effective. Good right hand, and that wobbles Pinto for a moment. Is against the ropes now. Now you should see Gomez get inside with that, those uppercuts. He's one of the few fighters that can throw a series of uppercuts from the body to the head. You see him go to the body and then up to the chin with that left hand. Well, that right hand doing a bit of damage. There it is again. Gomez very effective with that overhand right. You notice Gomez gives you a lot of faints, a lot of head faints. Throws his opponent off and then he capitalizes on it. Hand a little bit short. Moving down toward the 32nd mark remaining here in the first round. The round that has belonged pretty much to the champion Wilfredo Gomez. Pintos looks he looks a little sluggish to me. He's not starting off as strong and as aggressive as he normally do. Got that right hand in again. And draws a warning from Arthur McCanthy to keep him up. of round one and I would have to think around that Gomez pretty much controlled Pinto as you mentioned biding his time. Let's take a look at, at a replay here. You saw how he poured the left hand and came straight across from the shoulders and the hips and the, from his feet. He hit him with that right hand and Pinto didn't show much reaction to it. Ray, a question to you. Uh, isn't a quality fighter or a champion like Pinto getting hit too easily by that right hand? Well, no, that's not the case. Well, I felt that he's starting off so slow. He seems to be a little sluggish to me, Larry. Pinto is not moving his head, and good experienced fighters, veteran fighters, they don't get hit as often, especially with the right hand. Also, it seemed to me that he's allowing Gomez to set the pace, and that in order to impose his strength on Gomez, he has to make him fight a busier fight. Well, we'll see the second round whether or not Pinto starts to think. Round two, transitional round early on here for Lupe Pintor. He will have to change some of the strategies that he employed in the first round. Not in this fight. Pintor content to fight at long range right now. Of course, it could be the fact that Gomez is keeping him off of it. For the first round, Gomez did not throw any uppercuts. He threw all straight punch, and they land like that right hand just threw there. but it got Gomez going away off his back foot. Gomez appears to be physically larger and is stronger than Pinto. Well, both men came in weighing exactly the same. Pinto missing with two hooks and an uppercut. Now Pinto's punches are beginning to get a little sharper now. He's getting his punches in. And I think it's just a matter of rounds before he's able to do something effective. Lunging left hand, no damage. punches there. 
Pinto is pressing the attack, but as Gomez, he's landing the punches. Pace picking up a bit here toward the end of the second round. And see, the reason for that is because every time that Pinto try to get set, Gomez will move back and throw him off. Pinto trying to work to the body, trying to get inside, and he's been rather unsuccessful on both counts. Another pretty good right hand on the top of the head thrown by Rosalito Gomez. And another. That overhand right has been very effective in both rounds. Now those are very good shots, Barry, to the body. Those body shots take the toll in the late rounds. And Pinto, a bit of a late rally here as we wind down toward the end of the second round. There's Lupe Pinto. Tienes que moverla para los lados. Si no mueves la cabeza, te va a dar todas las derechas. He's saying, stop getting hit by so many right hands. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks Spanish. <laughs> Larry, let me uh, ask you, why are you surprised that he's getting hit with these right hands? And there as we watch a replay, as Gomez again sets him up and hits him with a straight right hand. And secondly, are you surprised that they're having so little effect on Pintor? Yeah, but Pinto known to take a good punch, and uh, Gomez is sneaking that right hand in, but I don't feel that Pinto can continue to take the punches for 15 rounds. I seen that you marked your schedule for 15 rounds, but it ain't going, Larry. <laughs> Through the first two rounds, it is a fight that has been commanded pretty much by Wilfredo Gomez as we await the start of the third round. Gomez charging Pintor, catching with a right, a pretty good left hook in back of that. So Gomez picking up where he left off here. A right hand once more, and Pintor trapped on the ropes, trying to work his way out of trouble. Pretty good counter punch by Pintor off the ropes, but he's still back to the ropes. Takes another right hand and another from Gomez. Gomez measuring his man now. Pintor does not appear to be hurt. Takes another, another right and a good left hand by Gomez. And still has his back to the ropes. Scoring almost at will here on Pinto. Wasted a few when he had him against the ropes the first time. Pinto is laying back on the ropes and taking a lot of punishment here, although his legs still are under him. McKenzie telling Gomez to keep his punches up. A left hand by Gomez, and now he takes a warning for low blow. Right, a lot of those punches are not really getting through. They're being put on the arm and the glove of Pinto. Pinto is very slick, very crafty against those ropes. Now, Pinto did not appear to be hurt at any time. He took one right hand to the top of the head out of all of those that seemed to hurt him. Other than that, he did not seem to be hurt. Back to the center of the ring. That was a lot of punches thrown by Gomez. And see, now Gomez is pretty much trying to get a rest, a breather here. And you're going to see Pinto just stick the pace up. Gomez took an uppercut pretty well and is also marked on his cheek now. It does not appear to be bleeding, but it is swollen and definitely black and blue. And could open up, and he takes the left hand. Gomez back against the ropes out. He's in trouble in taking damaging punches from Pinto. Counters back with combinations of Pinto backs on. Pinto got the better of that exchange. Left hand by Pinto. And a left hand by Gomez. Both fighters dazed each other now with those, with those shots. Able to get inside a little bit better here than he was early on. He took Gomez's best punches early in the round against the ropes. And now he's taking command of it here. Good right hand by Pinto. Gomez against the ropes. Tries to spin off, holds on, takes the right hand and another. Gomez at long range tries to get his legs back. I don't know how far it'll go, but it's a great fight so far. is being thrown and a lot of punches landing for both men. Right hand a little short. Keep them up, Gomez. And McKenzie, you probably just heard say, keep him up, Gomez. Gomez takes a left from Pintor. And another left hand. Pintor, the aggressor now. End of round three. And it was a good one. Good 
Well, I said earlier that Pintor is a big machine, and Gomez just ran into the crew, which is that Pintor just <coughs> doesn't get hurt. Well, that was a very good round for Pintor. Here we see Gomez on the attack. That's Gomez was able to, st to stun Pintor a couple of times, but all of a sudden, Pintor just come back. Pintor laid on the ropes and let Gomez punch himself out a little there and then seize the initiative sometimes after this flurry. But as you can see, that was the one good punch that landed at the end of that flurry. Now we're going to see the opposite hiring as Pintor comes in. Pinto Larry is a little sharper than Gomez this round. This is a physical game. We start the fourth round. Keep them up, Lupe. And now McCanty tells Pinto to keep them up. So both men have drawn repeated warnings for low blows here from Arthur McCanty, the referee. Puffiness under the right eye uh, for Alfredo Gomez. It is not the kind of bruise or eventual cut that will cause him much problem. But it does look like it could open up, and it could affect some swelling on the eye. It's on the lower part of the cheek. What I expect to see from Gomez, I'm saying from Pinto, with the uppercuts. Um, Pinto is starting to get through to Gomez, and he's starting to work the body a lot more. Once he gets close enough, he's able to do damage. But from the outside, I still favor Gomez. Pinto did manage to get inside toward the end of the third round. So far here in the fourth, it's been at long range. Pinto never changes expression. He gives his powerful shots, and he keeps his cool. Pinto makes a great fighter. This could be it case of Wilfredo Gomez trying to gather himself here, take a bit of a breather, stay away from the man. Either that or he's flat tired. Well, he threw a lot of punches in that third round and second round, so he could be a little onward. And from an experience standpoint, fighters, even myself, I throw a lot of punches, I coast for a round or so. One of the things that did seriously affect Wilfredo Gomez when he fought Salvador Sanchez was puffiness around both eyes. It has the makings here of affecting him once again. Good right hand, and another right hand behind it by Pinto. You see, Pinto is still the aggressive, and he's doing something now. So that's going to be a big difference. Pinto's punch is very sharp, very crisp right now also. He started off very sluggish, Barry, and now his punch is getting very, very accurate. Some of the steam seems to have gone from Wilfredo Gomez, at least for the moment. Pinto being much more patient right now, getting inside when he can, not wasting a lot of punches. You see, fighters have that instinct, that sense of when the fighter is tired, and what they do, they'll pour it on. And this is what Pinto is doing. Now you can sense Pintor really starting to dictate the tempo of this fight as we wind down toward the end of the fourth round, a coasting round pretty much for both men. Larry, do you think that Wilfred Gomez is now settled in to think it's going to be a long fight? Or is he starting to, re to reserve himself a little bit? I think Gomez is settling down, but when he starts to settle down, he's starting to get a hit. Pinto has got a lot of zip on his punch, like he just got hit with that right hand. And they're going to start to tell on Gomez. Gomez is trying to be cautious, but I think he's boxing, fighting a good fight. But uh, he's still got to be careful. Pinto throws another right hand, lands that right hand, and uh, Gomez still looks a little bit confused now, surprised. Do you think that Pintor is now dictating the pace of the fight, whereas earlier it was Gomez? Yes, he is. He's dictating the pace of the fight. He's throwing good jabs, good hard jabs, and uh, putting combinations behind him. He got Gomez backing up. That could be a factor. Okay. So we await the start of the fifth round now. See if Lupe Pintor can continue to dictate the tempo. Started to change in the third round. Well, you know, Barry Wilson, what Larry Holmes said, uh, Pinter is now starting to dictate the pace. I mean, he's 
the tempo of the fight now is, is Pinto's fight, and he's making Gomez back up. He's making Gomez uh, retreat, and that's what he wants. I don't believe that was a punch that knocked him backwards. He just tripped a little bit. That eye has not gotten appreciably worse since the third round. It is no problem right now to Wilfredo Gomez. Uppercut and a right hand by Gomez, but Pinto is right back on him, stalking his man. Luby Pinto is a very aggressive fighter. He's uh, He gets his eye, he's a brawler. And what's happening now is the fact that he's starting to gain momentum, mainly because Gomez is starting to back up. There Gomez set him up for that measuring right hand, but as Gomez backs up, he gives uh, Pinto momentum. Pinto is so far fighting a very tactical and a very intelligent fight. None of those punches did any damage, all caught by the arms of Wilfredo Gomez. That's more of Mackenzie saying, keep him up. his best punch in two rounds. That attempt uh, left the uh, hook to the body by Gomez. Those are the kind of punches I had expected to see a lot more from Gomez. by Gomez, but Pinto is really taken. Another right hand, Phil Pinto has not really backed up. Now he goes back against the ropes. This is a tactic he used in the third round. Nothing scored there, right hand of the chin did. Pinto seemingly wants Gomez to just punch himself out here. Sort of a variation on the rope of this. Round, I think it's fair to say. Well, it reminded me a little bit of prior in Aguayo when you see two champions going at each other. Uh, I think Gomez has decided that he wants to try to pop shot. And let's take a look and watch how Gomez sets up his man with a light jab, comes across with the right hand. What I've been noticing, Lars, is the fact that Gomez, that right hand, has a powerful, crisp right hand. And the fact remains that a guy can move up and deal with a heavier guy. I mean, there's what, less than five pound difference, and Gomez on bonds at Pinto, and Pinto is able to take him and retaliate. Gomez has also, I think, got a little bit more respect from Pinto. Pinto is not running in like he was before in the early. There you saw the right hand from Pinto. This is the second Mexican champion that yeah. Gomez has fought, and I think he's beginning to wonder something about Mexican <laughs> champions. <laughs> They can fight, is the bottom line of the whole thing. Sixth round. Pinto being the more patient of the two. Gomez trying to pick up the pace early on here. Gomez is scoring with some of those punches, but Pintor is really not taking a backward step. Does not appear to be hurt by any of them. Pinto has become a, a great technician here. You know, he, he's very strategic here. Now, he knows he goes to the body a couple of times, and this is making Gomez slow down. And he needs Gomez to slow down so he can get inside. Once more, that swelling under the eye of Wilfredo Gomez has not gotten appreciably worse. Pinto going downstairs, pretty effective punch there. That right hand a little bit short. Now Pinto has Gomez against Wilfredo to the left hand. 
Gomez fights his way off there, moves Vince over the ropes, now back in the center of the ring. I think those body shots are starting to bother Gomez, or even hurt him. One thing about it, though, you throw a punch to the head, you probably miss, but to the body, very seldom do you miss. This is what Pinto is doing. Pinto has not wasted a lot of punches. Gomez has thrown probably, I would say, three to one to Pinto. Pinto comes across sometimes with that overhand right. Lead off right hand. Pinto in Gomez's corner. And nothing scoring there. Nothing scoring so far. Pinto trying to fight his way off. Gomez with a left hand finally. That was the only punch that really did any kind of damage, whatever, and that did very little. Gomez right now, Ray, does not appear to be able to hurt Pinto. Gomez is making a mistake now. He's starting to reach and telegraph. He's jumping with his body, and he's being hit. Now his face is starting to swell, and this could take me a telling toe in the eighth round. That was a good left hand, and the legs wobble on Wilfredo Gomez. Pinto with just a straight left hand. You know, Pinto goes against the ropes, and I think he wants to be there. You see how well he comes across. He comes back to some beautiful shots, those uppercuts and those body shots. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't look like he's being forced into the ropes. It looks like he's there of his own volition. And right now, Gomez punching all of the arms. It just appears to me, Brad, that uh, Gomez's gas tank is starting to hit that E-mark. Definitely looks like it. Those punches are very ineffective being thrown by Gomez, and yet he's throwing a lot of them. But maybe he'll get his second win second, the next round. That was an elbow right there to the nose of Lupe Pinto. That was not a punch at all. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see that. And you can see Pinto point to his elbow and say, you hit me with the elbow, and he did. And they took a point away from Wilfredo Gomez, Larry. In a fight like that, a point could mean a lot. Let's take a look and see what happened here. There we see Pinto on the attack as Gomez tries to gather his forces. And now let's watch Gomez as he goes on the attack. Well, the right hand there kind of dazed Gomez. Gomez he was in a little trouble in that sequence. This could be a fight of attrition now. It's going to come down to conditioning and willpower. And Gomez has never defended his title successfully going the distance. Larry, one comment. You you gave that round, I see, in your scorecard to Gomez. Right. I thought he landed more, more good, clean punches in that fight. At the same time, I do think... The onus is on him to prove himself over the course of the fight because the body punches may be telling on him. This is the seventh round. Pinto and Gomez. Gomez in the red trunk, Pinto in the white. Super Bantamweight Championship. Good fight so far. Well, again, you saw Gomez reach in. He came in with his, his chin up. And like he's falling just there, he did it again. He's falling into Pinto, and that could be very, very costly. Pinto just seems to be the crisper with his punches, although as Larry Merchant correctly mentioned, he's not throwing as many as Gomez, although I believe he's been a little bit more effective than Gomez has. Pinto also looks fresher than Gomez. He still has his hands up high. He's coming in. He knows exactly what he's doing. I think Gomez now is just using experience. Pinto, very patient. Stalking Gomez a little bit here. He really hasn't been able to get inside with any great regularity on it. But it's changed there, and Gomez got the better of that. And a right hand by Gomez, and that sends Pinto back to the ropes. Pinto trying to fight off the ropes, does so with the left hand, and a straight left. Gomez has landed some big shots to the head, to the chin of Pinto, but the real damage I feel about will be to the body. When he hit the guy to the body, it really just cuts your wind off to the road, and you come up to the head. It gives you a second chance. Got that overhand right in for a moment. Gomez hasn't scored with that since early in the fight. And a left hand by Gomez. I'm so really surprised that Gomez has not won the body as often as he can. He's constantly most on the head and anything. 
The one thing that does strike me, even though Pintor does appear to be the commissioner of the two, he also appears to be breathing through his mouth, and in fact has for the last two, three rounds. Well, that's a very large mouthpiece that Pintor has. And, uh, in fact, I use a single mouthpiece. This, this guy is using double. I feel it's very uncomfortable also. But it would be. This is the seventh round, coming down toward 20 seconds remaining in the seventh round. Still a very close fight. Right hand by Pintor. Did not appear to hurt Gomez. And Gomez back with the right hand of his own. Very close fight. Has been since the first round. That one was controlled by Gomez. Since then, anybody's guess. End of round seven. here again is Gomez now in retreat but trying to set things up comes over with a left hand that lands a little behind the ear of Pintor giving him the, the shot uh, a little bit too much I don't think he should take that punch that he wants to uh, bring uh, Gomez off guard so uh, trying to wear Gomez down so that he can get him tied so he can go to work Lupe Pintor, Wilfredo Gomez. You notice now, if you uh, look at Gomez's eyes, uh, both of them are now starting to swell each round. And I feel that uh, Pintor is going to concentrate on those. He's going to use that as a target. I know Tom Hernandez did mine the same way. He did do that. <laughs> Remember, still to come, Wilfred Benitez, Tommy Hearns, Super Rollerweight Championship of the World. I'm sure that uh, the toughness around Gomez's eyes is very tender. It's a right hand that scored but did not hurt Pintor. Nonetheless, all those points add up. There seems to be a little blood coming from Gomez's mouth. I think the reason for that is because his mouth is open. Gomez was breathing rather heavily between rounds in his own corner, too. And now there is a puffiness over the left eye of Wilfredo Gomez that I have not seen before that looks very close to opening up. I don't know if you could get a good look at the left eye, over the left eye of Wilfredo Gomez is definitely red and very close to opening up. So we'll see if Pintor can work on that as they put more tape on the glove of Wilfredo Gomez. Not yet halfway through the eighth round. Well, you just said it, though. He lands on that left eye of Gomez. Pintor made a beautiful right hand. Again, a, a second right hand. The lead-off right hands of Pintor will be uh, very effective against uh, Gomez because Gomez dropped that left. He keeps that left hand down quite low. Gomez also, as you mentioned, Ray, bleeding from inside the mouth. And what's doing is the uppercuts also. Every time that uh, Pinto is able to get close enough to Gomez, he'll deliver a left or right uppercut. Two good shots by Pinto right on that eye of Gomez. You notice you don't see any bruises on Pinto. He has that kind of skin that's very, very durable. Right hand by Gomez, or the left hand by Gomez. Ineffective, but nonetheless, they all score. And Gomez's eyes are getting to be a mess here. It's going to definitely be a factor, I feel, Ray. Oh, yes, it will, especially the, the, the fight progress. As long as the fight goes on, the eye has a tendency, tendency to swell and possibly uh, shut close. And then you see a desperation in a fighter because he tries to fight over as soon as he possibly can. The left eye is very puffy so far of Wilfredo Gomez, and getting worse as time goes on here. Swelling below and above the eye. Gomez should go to the body sometimes because those head shots, and again, he's had some beautiful shots, they're not, taking, they're not doing any damage. He needs to go to the body. Left hand to the head, just, just as you said. Go to the body, left hand to the head. And a right hand at the bell. There 
is a man who, Larry, is all business right at the moment. He looks very confident, does he, brother? He has that same look at all times. He has a look like when a guy's about to get mine. <laughs> fear. <laughs> That's right. Absolute pure fear. Here's Gomez. You know, even though I have Gomez slightly ahead in this fight, he is the fighter who is being beaten up at this point. His eyes are puffy, his mouth is bloody. He looks a little bit more tired. And he's got seven long rounds to look forward to at least. The right eye, really the puffy one, and you can see it is a nasty kind of puffiness. Both eyes actually in danger of closing. Pinto pressing the attack early on here in the ninth round. Well, I'm a house specialist, and I, I can, you know, definitely say that his eye will, you know, possibly close. Because the more punches that are landed on that eye, chances are that it will close. Gomez remaining at long range. That right hand lead by Pinto has been his most effective. What I would say for Gomez, in fact, he should go to work now. I mean, he doesn't have time is against him. So he needs to go to work now. Pinto has picked up the pace here a little bit. Left hand, those are the kinds of punches that hurt. Right to the rib cage, and another downstairs. What you, look, what you have to look at is, in fact, whenever Gomez lands a punch, you have to see that the Pinto will land a punch to the body. Pinto also just lost a point for low blows. So each man now has lost a point. There again, Pinto just stands on the body shot. Every time Gomez throws a combination, Barry, Pinto comes in with a body shot. Now he goes up there and scores with all five of those punches. Again, body shots. They will take their toes, especially a fight of this pace. Pinto is staying inside and paying the price for it. Gomez with a combination drives Pinto off of it. Well, Pinto took a breather and Gomez capitalized on it. Pinto back against the ropes now. That has been an effective tactic for him in this fight. Watch for the little shot, the uppercuts. Gomez getting the better of this one. Those wide shots are not doing that much damage. The small shots inside, those up close there, by Pinto, are really the most effective punches. Pinto are taking a lot of punches from Gomez, but does not appear to be hurt. Nonetheless, those all add up on the scorecard. Well, the, the accumulation value of punches will take his toes. Gomez giving it his best shot now, and Pinto taking everything he has. Pinto just bobbing and weaving on the ropes here, taking everything that Gomez is throwing. A right hand, another right hand, and a combination. Pinto's legs are still very much under it. A right hand drives him back into the rope. Pinto tries to fight off the rope. Pinto's rivals with a lot of those shots. A lot of times he's rolling with the same punch. And so the punch is not landing as, as devastating as it looks. But Gomez is, has been, that's been a bird to ground for Gomez. This is taking everything that Gomez threw. A lot of the punches scored. None of them hurt him. Here in the end of the ninth round. End of the ninth. take a look at that vicious exchange on the ropes which lasted about a minute Larry have you ever seen anything quite like that one I haven't seen anything I think like I said earlier Pinto's strategy is to wear Gomez down but he's taking punches while he's doing it I think Gomez heard something that Leonard said it was uh, the body shot there go one there and this is the same flurry here from another angle and even though Gomez seems fatigued and tired he let it all go there he has that determination of a champion. He wants to continue to be champion. Therefore, he's going to give it all he got. You can't count him out yet. His eyes are swollen and whatnot, but he's still going to give it all he got. We saw his handlers leap in and take him back to the corner after that round as though he had taken the beating when actually he had administered more punishment than his opponent had. That's been pretty much the story of the fight so far. I still have him ahead. 
is the 10th round. It's been a good fight so far. Gomez's left eye is really bruised badly now. Under and over. He did the right thing that, that round, the last round because he went to work and uh, I thought he had Pinto for a while, but Pinto's a very smart fighter. He was rolling with a lot of those shots. What a good straight shot by Gomez. him off of him though with that jab. Pinto now inside. That's where he wants to be and that's where he's most effective. Gomez says, come on. You can't get a fighter like Pinto with momentum. He comes and he's throwing hard punches anyway. And while you're backing up the punches are even the power the punches are multiply. Well, Gomez, win or lose, is going to remember that he's been in the fight with Lupe Pinto. You notice Pinto keeps that chin tucked in. He keeps it down. So uppercuts will raise his chin and set your heavy, heavy, enable you to set your man up for left hooks. So Goldman should bring his punches under now. He's landed with some straight punches. They have not been that damaging, so he needs uppercuts. Pinto now trying to force it once more. Force the action. Get inside. But when he does, Gomez is countering very well. The eye looking very bad, but it is not yet cut. The, the tape is loose again on Goldman's nose. I, I feel that Alpha McConnell will stop, stop the fight temporarily again. If he should see it. That's true, he is on the opposite side of that eye. There is no blood, you should remember, and remember that Gomez, if he's not ahead, is certainly very close in the fight. And on Larry Merchant's card, as he mentioned, he is ahead. And you saw Gomez look down at his glove, and I think that's a welcome time for Gomez with his 19 seconds remaining here in the round. Once more, the adhesive tape on the glove coming loose. Well, Wilfred Benitez is in the back in the dressing room. I'm quite sure he's watching this fight and he's, he's thinking about it. And here we have Gomez, who's thinking about it also, the fact that his title is on the line and it could be taken. And once more, now they're gonna work on the other glove. There are about 20 seconds remaining in the round here. And you get a good look at the face of Wilfredo Gomez, and it is a mess. Nonetheless, it has been Gomez that has pressed the action in the fight and has scored with the most effective punches. And Pinto rallying here at the end of the round. Arthur McCanty finally stopped it, actually stopped the action before the bell. And there we see Tommy Hearns in his dressing room appears to be loose confidence. It's very, very That's the crowd reacting to Tommy Hearns being seen on the screens here inside the Superdome. And then now we're in the corner of Wilfredo Gomez. You can see the ice being pressed not just to an eye, but to the face. And Lupe Pintor, the implacable Mexican Bantamweight champion, and you can't see a mark on him. I don't understand it. Makeup, right? <laughs> I think it's makeup. You think they're putting makeup on him and then scoring really there? So instead of ice packs. You know, taking a good punch is a virtue in the ring, but I don't know if taking so many of them is a virtue. He's taken a lot of good, hard, clean punches. He definitely has and has not stepped back from them. In but, fact, he's invited them. But they, they really don't show. I mean, they don't take it, I don't see any marks or indication that uh, he's been taking heavy punches. This is the 11th round. This fight will be decided almost certainly in the final four rounds. Combination by Gold by uh, Pinto rather. Gomez is just gonna stay. 
stares back at him. Gomez able to uh, dominate around. He has a tendency to pivot on his opponent, get on the side of him and throw punches. So here he gets to totally dominate the round from Pinto. Keep them up. Once more, after the candy, telling Gomez this time to keep him up. Well, he buckled for a second there. He did. He is definitely on wobbly legs right now. It's still in. It's amazing how he comes back so strong. He gets caught with a series of combinations, a series of punches, and he comes right back. The interesting thing is, when Pinto does get inside where he wants to be, Gomez gets the better of it. Well, you have to keep in mind the fact that Pinto's has some big bombs on Gomez, but from a point standpoint, point system, Gomez is throwing far more punches. Good uppercut by Pinto. That was the best of that exchange. And Gomez comes right back. For every three punches that Pinto is able to land, Gomez throws at least five or six. So all these shots here, they have points. Good left hand right there by Gomez. Punches on the rope starting to take their toll more than they did early on. Pinto tries to fight off the if the fight should go the distance, bro, this is where Pinto is making a mistake. Taking those shots like last year unnecessarily, he's losing points against the ropes. Gomez still has Pinto against the ropes. Pinto tries to fight his way out, finally he doesn't take the left hand on the way out. And a right and another left. Gomez much the better at the bell. Larry, we have seen some good fights over the last couple of weeks, I'll tell you. Uh, let's take a look at Gomez landing some classic combinations a feeling right hand a long left square on the chin an accomplished fighter let's Gomez is still look like the beaten fighter but I have him now comfortably ahead in this fight because he's landing more fights and now I think what we have to see as we come down the home stretch is, is what a champion's heart really is. If he can uh, go on and maintain this lead over the last four rounds despite the fact that he is the more tired fighter. Okay. We start the 12th round. They come out and meet each other right away. And it's Gomez once more pressing things. Pinto back to the ropes once more. Tries to get out of there a little bit sooner than he has. Takes two good shots. And once more, his legs go. Gomez now comes in for the kill. Misses two shots. Pinto is hurt. Left hand and another right hand. And a left hand by Gomez. Pinto on double legs now. Gomez trying to put him away. Another combination. And Pinto can't seem to get off the ropes right now. And a right hand and another left. Pinto is definitely hurt. This is what champions are made of, though. I mean, these guys are going at it. They're, they're really tired, but yet determination, the will to win. Gomez takes a couple of shots and just elbows. Hits on back into the corner again. 
Pintor has taken Gomez's bet. No question about it. Gomez Malpe is knocked out. And now it's Pintor fighting back, and here's Gomez. It is give and take. That's simple. No, it's not. There is Malpe's is not knocked out. But some of the punches that has been landed. It's just incredible. These two guys are still going at it. Inside of one minute, remaining in the 12th round. Let's go. A little bit of blood from inside the mouth of Lupe Pintor now. And some of the sting seems to have gone from Pintor as well. Gomez marking him a little bit. But he takes a right hand when he does. Gomez right back on Pintor now. This is just real. This is really real to win now. These guys are really going at it. And so much determination and pride they hold in their championship. Pintor seems to have lost a little of the steam from his punch as out there. Takes a left from Gomez. Comes back with a combination of his own. Takes another left and another. At this point now, Barry, this fight is, is just a matter of who wants it the most. Coming down to the end of the 12th round. Gomez and Pintor's corner now takes a shot at the bell. Larry, I think you have to say it simply comes down to heart right now. Heart and conditioning, and once again, one of Gomez's handlers sprinted across the ring to drag him back to the corner. I don't know if he could have made it back on his own. Let's take a look at some of the action again. As you can see, Pinto with his back to the ropes. Once again, I have to repeat, it's a virtue to be able to take a punch, but it's not a virtue to take too many of them. Now we'll see Pinto turn the tables and come right back at Gomez. Now each, each round now we see Gomez being carried back to his corner. And the reason for that is to reserve as much energy for the next round. Falling over the left eye. A little bit worse than it was the round before, but that could be said in every round. 13, three to go. Pintor trying to pace up here. A wild left hand. It looked to me like a little bit of a steam might have gone from Pinto in the last round. Maybe I think it's because he's, he's taking some shots, and it's been a very fast pace in the very first round. But what happens, these little guys, they gain their uh, second win, and they come back very strong. In fact, that all of a sudden, I mean, they can turn the crowd. They can tell you at any given moment. Pintor trying to pace up, but he just can't get the consistent combination on Gomez. Coming down towards 30 seconds, we're maybe here in the 13th round. Been 
screaming almost constantly for the last three or four rounds. Into the 13th. And what a very, very hard round. And you should point out that the recent history of fights like this, really tough championship fights, is that late in the fight, the 14th round, maybe the 15th round, that one of the fighters who's given almost more than he had to give suddenly has no more to give. Well, here we see both fighters are still given, and it's just amazing. You have to appreciate these guys' condition because they're really going at it. And here late now in the 13th round, Gomez and Pintor are still landing big bombs. That was a low blow, as we saw there, but he was not warned. See how large Pinto's mouthpiece is. It's huge. Fourteenth round. Still anybody's guess. It'll be a judge's fight. The doctor took a look at the eye of Wilfredo Gomez. He did not appear to be too alarmed about the situation and had very little conversation in the corner. Left hand by Gomez. This is a very sneaky punch. A straight right hand and a straight left jab. It's not the, what we call the basic. Normally it's one left jab, right hand, left hook. Gomez, of course, has never gone 15 rounds. Every fight of his 37 victories has been a knockout. And, of course, the one loss he had was also a knockout at the hands of Salvador Sanchez. And down goes Lupe Pintor. Just like that, Pintor went down. Pintor is up. Gomez trying to finish him off. A right hand. And another left hand, and down he goes. And that will be the end of it. That is all. Larry Murphy, he said it exactly. A lot of heart. We've just seen a very great fight, and it's followed the script almost exactly of Ray Leonard's fight with Tommy Hearns, of Aguero's fight with, with Aaron Pryor, in which two fighters just gave everything, and suddenly one fighter had given more than we had known he had given and had nothing left. Well, I would agree, Larry. You know, you go beyond. If physically speaking, you can only take with so much, but these fighters here, they would be beyond that. Well, an outstanding fight. Lupe Pintor is still on the ground. He is conscious. He has been talking to his handlers. I would feel quite certain that this is a precautionary measure. Yes, and it should be taken. Right now, I think it's more so fatigue than just the physical punishment because there's, there's been a lot of punches thrown, but I think it's more so fatigue. Lupe Pintor being helped into a sitting position right now, and now he comes to his feet, and here's another look at the first knockdown. Here's Gomez, has control, he's dominating, and it was a brazen up the hand of the ear that was, he was able to put Pinto down. And again, I think a good indication of just what Larry Merchant said. He just had so much. But this, for these series of combinations here were more effective. The right hand just missed it. And that was able to put uh, Pinto down. And it's the right thing. Michael McKenzie came right in and said that's it. He never did count. Pinto was out. He is up now, and he appears to be okay. As you look once more at the second knockout. Well, that replay, you can appreciate the, the, the power and the punch that sent uh, Pinto to the canvas because it was pushed up uh, left to the chin. 
Lupe Pintor, you have a look at him. He will sit down in his corner. He does appear to be okay, but of course, because of the recent tragedy in the sport of boxing, nobody is taking any chances, and that, needless to say, is a wise thing to do. They kept Pintor down. He was never unconscious. They kept him down. He was talking to his handlers. They just stayed there. They looked into his eyes, and finally they helped him up. They helped him up. And he is in his feet and sitting in his corner. He appears to be okay. Alfredo Gomez has come over to our corner here. And Larry Merchant is just a moment. We'll be talking with him. Here's the official announcement from Jimmy Lennon. The super featherweight champion of the world from Puerto Rico with Bravo Bazooka Gomez. So, well, Fredo Gomez is one of those outstanding fight, right? I mean, both, both fighters, I mean, they, they display so much heart and talent and skill that um, I would... Uh,